about five pounds more than where I want it to be. And uh, I'm not sure what to do. So I put the tiller string on it and twisted the tiller string until I was about at brace height, which is around six and a half inches. And I tried to draw it and it felt really stiff. I put it on my little bow scale and it's way over where I want it to be. Um, so we're going to trap the limbs. Um, trapping the limbs is basically beveling the back of the bow and to make a trapezoid cross section. Um, hopefully that'll take some weight off for me. The nice thing about that brown glass is I can see high spots which should help me um, rasp it all down evenly. So I've drawn it several times and um, it doesn't act like it's going to blow up. So a little later on this afternoon, we're going to go ahead and take our first shots with it and see what happens. Well, it shoots. Um, it's not a speed demon by any means. Um, it's nice and quiet. I shot it maybe 20, 25 times. Um, I noticed I was torquing it a little bit. I've got a tiny little raspberry. Uh, and there's a couple of hot spots in the grip right around this area. So uh, I'm going to sand those down a little better. I also am going to put a snakeskin backing on it and I'll show you that here in a little while. I managed to pick up a really big bull snake um, and I think that's going to look really awesome on this bow. It looks nice, the tiller is good, and it shoots. So that's a win. So here's the snakeskin I'm going to use. Like I mentioned, it's a big bull snake that I picked up.
And for anyone who thinks, man, that sure looks like a rattlesnake, well, that's kind of their thing. But if you notice the head, it's narrow, not triangular. And if you look real close, the pattern is quite a bit different, even from our prairie rattlesnakes that we have out here. Uh, similar, but different. And that's kind of one of their defense mechanisms. This one was already dead when I got him. And I just figured, well, he's plenty big enough. What a better way to use um, the skin. So anyway, back to work. I'm just laying out the pattern the way I want it. I need to cut at the bottom of this chevron that way I can have this whole chevron up against that piece of overlay and then the uh, pattern runs down the limb his head end is a lot darker than the rest of him so I need to orient it in such a way that I get um, this darker bit closer to the handle just for aesthetics I can't remember if the scales are supposed to point towards the handle. It doesn't really matter in the end, um, as long as we do that the same way on both sides. Because um, we're going to peel the scales off with tape after everything's all glued down. You can see there's still a little bit of tissue in here, so I'm just going to really carefully scrape that with the blade. You can use tanned snake skin, soft tanned ones. Uh, those are a lot easier to find than dried skins. But if you use tanned skins, then you need to be really cautious of what they used for the tanning agent. A lot of them have a bunch of glycerin in it, and that's not good for glue up. So scraping even the belly part of the tanned skins um, is very important. And I don't know if you can wash some of that stuff out. Um, I just know that it's a lot easier with the dried skin. Okay, to glue the skin down, we're going to use barge cement. Um, so we'll size the back of the bow with barge cement, and then we'll size the skin with barge cement. And we'll let those get almost dry, and then smush them together. And that, uh, that should do it. If you're going to use tanned skins, soft tanned skins, you need to use tight bond. Um, I don't know why I tried barge cement on tan skins and it just doesn't hold.
I beveled it almost all the way to the last, I don't even know if you can see it, to the bottom of the laminations. It's just right into the top of the glue line, just through the top of the glue line on that third lamination there. And then the back glass is rounded. Um, I've gone over everything with 320 grit sandpaper, um, and I think this is as good as it's going to get. Um, it's coming in at 58 pounds um, ish, which is only two pounds more than what I currently shoot. So I'm happy with that. And like, But at some point in time, we have to quit messing with it or we're going to screw it up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my first coat of finish on and I'll show you what that looks like. I don't have a lot of this Danish oil, but I'm going to put probably four coats on and then uh, I will top coat it with polyurethane. That's a long process. Um, I have to wait 72 hours from my final coat of Danish oil to when I can put on my first coat of the polyurethane. So I'll show you what it looks like um, with one coat of finish on it, and then I'll probably people watching this series are gonna think, man, this guy only has like three sets of clothes. But once you get some fiberglass dust and epoxy on one shirt, you don't want to wear another one. <laughs> This stuff doesn't wash out very good either. The snake skins will soak up a lot. Pretty simple, lots of really light, thin coats. It builds up over time. Um, you don't want to use a whole bunch of it because then you get drips and runs and you make a mess. So, just a little at a time. That looks really nice. I, uh, I'm very pleased with that. It shows off the scars in the snake skin. I think it looks kind of neat. <laughs> it adds character. We'll hang that for 30 minutes. And we'll come back out and we'll soak the rag again and wipe it down again and that'll be the first coat. So I'm probably going to end this here. Um, really excited to get this bow finished. And I will make another video of the final finishing touches. We need to make a new string. We need to serve the string. Uh, make a couple of string silencers, uh, a tip protector out of leather, figure out some kind of grip. Um, I like laced stuff.
stitched leather, but I hate to cover up all that pretty shadua, so um, we'll have to figure something out for that. This needs a bunch more coats of just this oil first. Um, we'll probably repeat this process at least four times. Um, that'll give us five coats. And then it's going to have to sit for 72 hours. And um, then we'll do probably two coats, maybe up to four coats, really thin of spray on poly. Um, I couldn't be happier. We got it down close to target weight. It shoots and it looks very nice. So thank you for coming along with me during this process. I'm looking forward to putting the finishing touches on this bow and then getting it tuned up. I don't know if I'll be using it this deer season. Um, opening day of archery season was today. I may go out this evening, I'm not sure. Um, but until we get this thing tuned and some arrows figured out for it, it probably won't come with me in the field. Definitely a successful project, and I'm glad you guys got to come along with me. Thanks for watching.